You're the state senator of a highly diverse uh, city of Canton. Uh, the Governor Snyder introduced uh, the Michigan Office for New Americas in 2014 yeah. and uh, established June as the uh, month for uh, new immigrants in Michigan. Yeah. How would you uh, attract more people to come to Michigan, given that there's a possible population decline and we might lose a congressional seat because yeah. of that? Well, the best way to attract people to Michigan is with economic policy. Um, my elimination of state personal income tax and senior pension tax gets us to the point where we're 0% income tax, 6% sales tax. A lot of the people, and when I graduated from the University of Michigan, I went to Alabama, I went to Florida, I, and uh, both of those places are, are um, much, more, uh, much better economic uh, conditions than what we had at Michigan at the time. They were growing as states. Matter of fact, they were right to work states. And it was one of the reasons that they're growing so well. And that's one of the reasons I pushed for Michigan to become the 24th right to work state. Um, so the best way is to have an attractive business environment where we've got jobs for them to come to. Um, this isn't something that we want to just promote government assistance or population for the sake of, of population. We got to get people back here working. And a lot of families back in the last decade under Governor, Governor Granholm were pushed out of the state because of bad economic policies. Um, the way to reverse that trend is by eliminating the state, senior pension tax and the state income tax. Uh, I think you'll see a lot of people wanting to stay here in Michigan and bring up their families. As a follow-up to that, I'd like to know if you plan to have refugees as part of that plan and if you support the EV-5 program. Well, I back when we had the Syrian refugee and Governor Snyder put his finger on the pause button, I issued support for that and uh, because uh, I actually found out how they were actually screening refugees to come here into the state of Michigan and there was no attention to the security. This is coming from Syria. This is a land of ISIS. So one of the S's in ISIS is Syria. And so we want to go off and understand who are we transplanting here to the state of Michigan. Now there's some genuine refugees that have their lives threatened over there. And they're from a lot of different uh, races and creeds out there as well, including Muslims. Because if you're, uh, a lot of Muslims were persecuted by ISIS as well because they weren't Muslim enough, if you know what I mean. So um, I want to screen people so that we we make sure that they're actually interested in becoming American. If they want to come here and resettle, then it's about assimilating into American culture. It's not about setting up, you know, unique cultures. My grandparents came over. Um, my grandma came from Poland. My grandpa came from Ukraine. And uh, they, they kept their culture. I mean, I have my pierogi and my kibasa and my sauerkraut and my, um, and my guamki back at home. And I, I love that kind of stuff. We had that. But ultimately, they learned English, they got to work, they, he started uh, out working at a gas station, then ended up owning his own gas station. And um, that's what we need to get an appreciation for. So anybody coming here, we want them to become Americans. And, uh, um, and so that's one of the things that I'd be focused on. It's not just bring people for the sake of relocating and increasing population. It's a matter of bringing them over here because they appreciate the opportunities we, we are afforded uh, as Americans. And they want to be part of that that American society. Senator, what role can immigration play in meeting the workforce needs of Michigan's employers? Um, well, I mean, there's uh, a lot of the visa programs, especially for farm communities and the migrant workers, is something that's been very important. They've actually offered, I've talked to a lot of farmers where they've tried to put Medicaid enrollees on there. They last maybe two weeks and say, this is too hard, I want to leave. Well, it, that doesn't leave too many people that are willing to go off and work in those environments. And so there is an opportunity where there are jobs that apparently there are Americans that are here that are able-bodied that are, that are just unwilling to go off and fill. And for those, we do need to pick our crops and we need to go off and support that. There's other skilled areas, maybe in software engineering that we've got some deficient of. There's a whole spectrum where, um, where we've got a skill deficiency to, that uh, needs to be filled. By all means, I think we should look at maybe bringing some folks in, but the idea of uh, immigration for the sake of immigration and just population re, um, uh, increases for the sake of population increases is, is not a good policy to have. I think it's got to be more uh, demand driven. And uh, one other thing that might influence immigration in Michigan in the future, the 2020 census and the yeah. citizenship question, how do you see that impacting the state? Well, I think it's important to ask whether or not somebody is a citizen or not, especially because we're apportioning um, uh, you know, voting privileges based on that and your voting influence based on that, and you have to be a citizen in order to vote. So I think it's very important to be asking that question. And um, we'll, uh, as far as what the impact is, I mean, whether or not, uh, whatever the impact is, it's the right thing to do from a rule of law perspective.
Thank you.